Hi everybody, I'm Serge K. Kilembi and thanks for joining me for the weekly US market reports. Time to trade the markets, the week ahead, perspectives and analysis. First, as usual, as all you already know, we're going to have a look at the economic calendar. We're going to have a look at the earnings. Next, we're going to have a look at some news. And then we're going to look at the S&P 500 sectors map and then we're going to do some technical analysis and price action mainly for the US indices and um, some ETFs and bonds and the dollar and precious metals okay and as you already know that's my page my web page www.gctream.com solution and solutions and here you can find all of my services and if you need more information please feel free to contact me at the number shown at the screen below or by sending me an email here you have the messaging box okay so that's it and now let's dive right into it and let's begin and first of all let's have a look at the economic calendar for the major countries and let's have a look here that's for the trading week beginning on today's monday october the 30th and until uh, friday november the 3rd okay so let's see here today we have spain you see main concern in spain over here we have the gdp growth quarter over quarter and year over year next in switzerland we have the cough leading indicators for october in, in the eu business confidence for october in the us we have personal income month over month and personal spending month on month for September, both for September. Next in Germany, we're gonna have the inflation rates year over year for October. On Tuesday, October the uh, 31st, in Japan, we're gonna have an employment rate for September. In Great Britain, the GFK consumer confidence for October. In China, NBS manufacturing PMI for October. In Japan, we're gonna have the uh, Bank of Japan interest rate decision and quarterly outlook reports. In France, we're gonna have the GDP growth rates quarter over quarter first estimate for Q3. And the EU, we're gonna have the GDP growth rates quarter over quarter flash and year over year flash for the Q3 and unemployment rate for September. On Wednesday, November the, uh, the 1st, we're going to have in China the Kaishik Manufacturing PMI for October. In the US, we're going to have the ADP unemplo uh, Employment Change for October, the ISM Manufacturing PMI for October, and the Fed Interest Rates Decision uh, in October. You see the uh, main cons uh, consensus and forecast, the uh, rates are going to uh, remain unchanged. And on Thursday, November the 2nd, Australia, we're going to have the balance of trade for September. In Japan, consumer confidence for October. In Switzerland, the conf uh, consumer confidence uh, Q4. In Germany, we're going to have the unemployment change for October and an employment rate for October. And in Great Britain, the MPC meeting minutes, Bank of England interest rate decision and Bank of England quantitative easing okay so that's a week of central banks and a lot of meetings last week we had the uh, bce meeting and the interested decision speech by mr mario draghi and with all the turmoil uh, uh, taking place in spain especially with the region of catalonia now the new republic of catalonia we saw the uh, euro uh, falling down and also a lot of stuff uh, going on with the uh, sovereign bonds uh, being dumped and stuff like that okay so now let's move on so that's it for the economic calendar so now let's have a look uh, let's go back to the us and let's see what's going to happen with uh, the earnings okay for the same uh, period uh, number one over here october the 30th we have the AMC Entertainment, we have Dominion Resources, we have Doryang, we have Mondelez International, we have Rudolph Technologies, October the 31st, we, we have Armada Offler uh, Properties, we have ERA, we have MasterCard Incorporated, we have Pfizer on uh, November the 1st, we have Iro Hive Networks, uh, over here we have Ares uh, Commercial Real Estate, we have Ashford Hospitality Prime, Continental Building Products, Core Energy Infrastructure. We have Facebook Incorporated, very, very important. Uh, we have Heritage, Reynolds American, and Time Warner. On November the 2nd, uh, great, great day, we're going to have Alibaba, 
Hamburg World, Apple, very, very important, uh, KO.com, Century Communities, Channel Advisor, uh, Essence, Global Brass and Copper, Great Television, HCI, Marine Software, Penny Mac Financial Services, Pioneer Engineer uh, Energy Services, Priceline, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, R uh, Resolute Forest Products, Rubicon Projects, uh, Silver Spring Networks, Third Quarter uh, Resources, UMH Properties, and finally on Friday, November the 3rd, we're going to have Mana, uh, Internet Building Products, and Trans uh, Entrix. Okay, so very, very important. Facebook, Priceline, Apple, Alibaba, Time Warner, uh, MasterCard, and Pfizer. And what else? That's it. These, gonna, these are uh, the uh, very, very heavy names and very important names amongst uh, the others. Okay, so now let's have a look at some news to see what's happening here. For the moment, you see the uh, Dow Jones is already open, uh, up 33 points, NASDAQ up 20 points, uh, uh, excuse me, S&P 500 up uh, 20 points, and NASDAQ 100 up uh, 170 points, 75 points, excuse me. Gold is flat, oil is flat, uh, euro dollar uh, at 1.16 and the Bitcoin trading around uh, $6,200. Okay, so now what's happening? You see over here we have the CVS bid for Aitna at a 62 billion bet on cutting drug cost. So the drug uh, and pharmaceutical industry over here, cyber security ETF backer says NASDAQ exit over index management. Over here, investors are running out of cash, and that's terrible news for the stock market. So watch out for the stock market. Uh, okay, so next, uh, over here, we have stocks, uh, best performing stocks for uh, last trading session on Friday. You have Intel, Microsoft, Apple, United Health Group, and McDonald's, worst performing stocks for the last session, Boeing, Nike, General Electric, Chevron, and Merck. Next, let's move on. News, you see Google. Google had a great, great, great uh, earnings uh, publication last week. So that's great. Amazon also. Now we have Mr. Jeff Bezos being the richest man on earth. And Tesla also uh, still talking about uh, Tesla and the Model 3. And over here, commodities. We saw oil now. It's being flat. So let's see some news over here. Exxon investors hurdle on climate data as proxy deadline looms. And over here, big oil. 1 billion uh, climate fund picks investments, eyes new members, okay, over here, and Exxon Chevron third quarter profit jump on rising commodity prices, okay, so that's it, so that's good, rising oil and natural gas is good for uh, those particular companies, and hopefully here you see Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stuff like that always in the news, uh, European markets, you see uh, your weekends, you see uh, following the uh, Mr. Mario Draghi speech and the BCE meeting and over here uh, bonds and interest rates what do we have talks about the US economy oh yeah the uh, things uh, very very heavy in the news now who's gonna be the next Fed chair so here in the picture we have presidents Mr. Donald Trump and uh, Mr. Steve Mnuchin, uh, Secretary of Treasury. And so now we're gonna have a lot of speculation and people talking about who's gonna be the next Fed chair, okay? So that sits over here. What do we have? We have Warren Buffett, and I remind you that uh, Warren Buffett, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, lately uh, was talking about the uh, Bitcoin bubble and stuff like that, so uh, that's it uh, among other things. So that's it for the news, and now let's have a look at um, the markets and now let's have a look at the s p 500 sectors map and let's see what took place last week and what uh, can we expect for uh, this current week okay technology great week for technology remember facebook's gonna uh, uh, publish her earnings and stuff like that google a great week microsoft great week so overall for the technology sector was great services great great week for amazon you see now amazon is being trading over uh, eleven hundred dollars or same thing as google now above a thousand dollars basic materials great week uh rising oil prices and rising uh, natural gas prices though so uh, that's good for the sector over here healthcare bad sector bad week uh, worst performance uh, performance uh, sector 
utilities flats, uh, industrial, industrial goods 50 50, the big names in red. Over here, consumer goods, great week for Apple. You see mainly uh, in the news, gonna hear about um, news about the iPhone X and the iPhone 8. Also, you, uh, we saw a great problem uh, concerning the uh, supply chain for Apple and the Model X, but also uh, we have a Apple co-founder, Mr. Warziak, uh, talking about the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 that it wouldn't uh, up, up, uh, upgrade uh, to the iPhone 10 and he uh, remain with his iPhone 8. Uh, and over here, what do we have? Financials, but great week for financials. Expect for Berkshire Hathaway, flat week. Uh, BK, that's the Bank of New York Mellon Corporation. And flat week also in red for Goldman Sachs. So that's a 50-50, okay? So over here, that's it for uh, sectors. Now let's have a look at the ETFs and let's see the overall market indices new highs record highs so still bullish over here large cap bullish mid cap bullish and uh, small cap uh, let's see it's flat volatility you, you see you have over here the vix and the xiv everything look uh, looks normal the sector is now bad week for healthcare Flat week for energy, financials great week, real estate back, uh, bad week, technology great week, utilities flat, consumers non-cyclicals in red, basic materials good week, industrials flat, and consumers cyclicals, uh, let's say that's a 80% in green, so that's a good week. International great week for China and for Japan, but the rest of the world emerging markets and developed markets flat. Brazil in red over here, the global miners, you see everything in red over here, expect for the dust in the GST, in uh, green over here, uh, all sectors, uh, you see sectors in red, uh, technology over here in green, and what else, commodities, commodities flat, bad week for gold and for silver, great week for ga uh, gas and oil particularly, and over here fixed income, you see uh, government bonds in are flat, but uh, are going and pointing towards the downside, and same thing as uh, fixed income corporate bonds, okay, flat week, so that's it, so, and now let's go back over here and let's have a look at some charts and let's do some technical analysis and price action okay so let me download my presets a little bit of water and you already know that in this particular broadcast um oh i only focused on uh we're gonna only um we're gonna focus especially and exclusively on uh, the stock market and on Wednesday I'm going to be doing the um, time to trade the cryptos okay so in here is just stock market and cryptocurrencies I'll leave that for Wednesday okay so I can do uh, two separate broadcasts and be and uh, so I can go uh, and give you much details and much analysis so that's going to be better okay so over here, what do we have? We have Dow Jones Industrial Average still at record highs. You see last week we have a, a bullish power candle still above the four weeks moving average. A little bit pull, a little bit of pullback during the uh, one or two sessions during uh, the week. But this week we are uh, beginning uh, stronger and we remain above 23,000 uh, points for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's see what's going to happen with the earnings, if the uh, expectations are very high and uh, the results are positive. So we go, we could see another, we could see another run, another uh, uh, run towards the 23,500 uh, points. So that's the my main target and a main focus area uh, for the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So overall we remain bullish. So that's nothing more to say about that so we remain bullish and uh, we expect a correction but for the moment it's bullish so uh, it's bullish so uh, we're gonna remain bullish next nasdaq 100 and over here uh, yes nasdaq 100 let's see what's happening over here you see great results for the company uh, the nasdaq the googles and stuff like that the amazons 
And now we're going to have Facebook and Apple. You see huge run. You see over here interaction with the four weeks moving average and eight weeks moving average. But we gain all of um, all of the uh, losses. All of the uh, uh, bearish power. Uh, bearish power was uh, cancelled, and now buyers are jumping in, pushing price higher, and the result a Nasdaq 100 at 62. Hundred dollars or uh, 6200 points, excuse me. So that's it. So we remain bullish over here. You see, if we have a channel over here, it supports resistance, support close to all time highs over here, or horizontal support, uh, resistance, excuse me, here break, and then now at channels resistance. So, uh that's it for me that's the uh, main target so now let's see what's gonna happen we, uh, i think that we're gonna push a little bit more higher towards the 6250 and then uh, we're gonna see some sideways movements and interaction with the uh, moving averages okay so now i'm expecting uh, the nasdaq to go much higher from here next uh what do we have over here we have the S&P 500 and with the S&P 500 exactly the same thing you see record highs over here interaction with the four weeks moving average trying to reach and to flirt with the uh, eight weeks moving average but rejected uh, buyers jumping in and pushing the price even much higher and now we are close to the 2600 just 20 points uh south of that particular mark so now i'm expecting uh we need to expect more moves towards the upside so we remain bullish okay and let's see how uh, uh the market's gonna react with the earnings and stuff like that remember we have a uh, a lot of uh, central bank uh, activities so uh, let's see what's gonna uh, happen okay and how the market's gonna react next let's move on now let's have a look at the vix volatility index okay over here the vix you see the vix ah, well, we are above of the lows of 9.50 now we are above 10 points you see over here convergence between the four weeks moving average and the eight weeks moving average but uh, the 13 weeks moving average in red and 21 and 26 weeks moving average are acting as resistance and going sideways you see over here 52 weeks moving average but now expect sideways movements but we are above uh, the uh, closer the uh, let's say uh, that uh, that way the uh, quick response you see uh, quick responding uh, moving averages four and eight and eight weeks moving average so now we are bullish over here so if you are bullish over here and if you see an increase in volatility so uh, that's going to be uh, translated as a uh, fall in the in uh, in the stock market you see we're going to see some uh, bearish activities and some uh, corrections so maybe that's the beginning of of that particular correction you see over here we have a gap an unfilled gap uh, around 1160 so uh, let's see uh, what's going to happen okay so be cautious and manage uh, risk correctly so now let's proceed this is we saw the vix now let's have a look at the xiv and xiv what the xiv is telling us xiv uh, you see last week was a a week now we have a uh, that was a indecision week we have over here a strong hanging man you see over here you see over here bearish uh, week interaction with the four weeks moving average crosses below reaching the eight weeks moving average then rejected it and then boom going back higher but still uh, bearish okay and in a inside week candle and over here you see that's our resistance and now supports and we tested it here at 96 dollars uh, so i'm expecting more moves towards the uh, downside so maybe we're gonna see a little bit of correction and maybe we're gonna have a following because that particular bearish candle over here 
and you see the lows of the uh, of last week can act as a uh, pointer so we can have a uh, more bearish activities so be cautious and uh, we're gonna pay attention to that and how it's gonna develop uh, and how it's gonna evolve during uh, this week now let's have a look at small caps and here we're gonna take a look at the russell 2000 russell 2000 small cap and um, let's see over here what do we have and for the russell 2000 exactly the same thing you see a month all of the uh, the all uh, here yeah, during october sideways movement now you see dojis 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 another hanging man over here and as you can see four weeks moving average eight weeks moving average still above the 50 percent of that particular candle but you can have we can have some bearish activities so uh let's see what's gonna happen you see from here i don't know but uh, to come a little bit lower and to correct uh distribution has to take place but let's see what's gonna happen with the earnings if we have good earnings and stuff like that maybe people are gonna take profits and so we're gonna see bearish movements okay so that's it nothing more to say over here we remain flat and next the yeah, earnings and also the uh fed uh interest rate decision now let's move on and over here now let's entering the uh, bond markets first of all let's begin with the uh, 10 year treasury notes and here what can we see uptrending channel you see over here below the supports channel support you see moving averages going down you see convergence over here between the 52 weeks moving average and eight weeks moving average you see great out, uh, bearish outside candle and bearish reversal bearish engulfing also uh, if i can say and you see now continuation but mm, that's uh, pretty shy you see no uh, great volume and here we are still bearish but now we see uh, indecision over here so uh let's see what's gonna happen okay if the bond market continues to go down you're gonna see uh, people taking money out of the bond market and going back towards the stock market and towards risk assets but for the moment that's indecision so let's see what's gonna happen with the fed decision and stuff like that so that's it for the uh, treasury notes 10 year uh, treasury notes now let's have a look at the uh, us 30 years treasury bonds okay oh no that's the yield uh excuse me me uh see uh the bond and the bond yeah that one okay okay you see over here same thing uptrending support over here below the supports trying to retest the support you see over here a bearish uh, reversal candle now going uh, lower you see over here that's your 208 weeks moving average acting as a strong uh, support you see four weeks moving average acting as a resistance now we're going nowhere sideways movements inside we candle but we remain bearish so we are flat and you need to expect uh, some catalyst and the catalyst will be uh, the uh, interest rate decision and also uh, we're gonna see if people uh, are gonna remain bullish in the stock market so that's it here no activities no nothing let's see uh, next week what what's gonna happen now let's move on and let's have a look at the uh, us dollar you saw a, a the us dollar gaining uh, power going back uh, higher you see over here uh, as i was expecting interaction with all moving averages now we see 26 over here here we have 104 moving average uh, 104 weeks 104 weeks moving average and that's your 52 weeks moving average so now that's the next step and you already know if uh, the dollar if people are buying the dollar they're selling the euro remember last week the events took in, uh, taking place at the ECB, also all the turmoil here in Spain, and especially with the Republic of Catalonia, now in an independent republic, and we saw uh, 
uh, a lot of uh, movement, bad movement, bearish movement and bearish um, volume entering the stock market, especially the Spanish stock market, the IBEX 35 uh, losing steam and going back lower. And also we saw a uh, uh, bearish activities with the euro also following the ECB uh, meeting and the Mario Draghi speech we saw uh, the euro falling so people are selling the euro and now going back to buy the US dollar okay that's it that's a last week was a strong bullish uh, candle over here now it's just the opening of the of the week a few hours from Sunday in the uh, Sunday night and now uh, we are just at the beginning of the week so now I'm expecting uh, maybe to go a little bit uh, we're gonna have some sideways movements and but here uh, you already know me I remain uh, uh, bullish you see we have a close above the 26 uh, moving average over here so I'm expecting a continuation so the dollar is going back towards 96 so expect the dollar or the euro dollar uh, to go down and to go below 1.16 towards 1.50 okay so now let's move on and now let's enter let's have a look at uh, uh commodities and first of all let's begin with energy and the uh crude oil wti futures so now let's have a look at that and let's see what's happening over here here crude oil see very 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 um, um bullish over here now we are at 54 that's great i think that that uh, this week we're gonna have a opec meeting uh, soon in early early in the early days of uh, november and so you see uh my projections me i'm expecting oil to reach uh, 55 50 56 dollars a barrel for the uh, wti crude oil so i remain very 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 bullish on oil and that's a great thing you saw earlier uh, when we uh, were reading the articles that and uh, looking at the sector's map that uh, oil in the sector uh, the energy sector was gaining power due to uh, a rise in uh, oil prices in energy uh, uh, commodity prices okay so that's great so oil i remain bullish and next now let's have a look at precious metals first of all let's begin with gold futures over here gold and gold 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 but as you can see still uptrending now at the level critical level over here you see we are uh, going sideways uh, sideways movement we are trading and going nowhere you see up and down you see a rejection so we remain uh, here in sideways movements between 1270 as a support also the that's our channel support over here and 1300 that's our uh, uh, resistance okay shorter term resistance over here as you can see so now i was expecting a continuation above the 1310 you see following that particular bullish candle but no directly we saw a, a bearish rejection candle bearish reversal candle and now we are back at that particular supports region also take a look at all the uh, major uh, moving averages 21 and 26 acting as a bottom you see four weeks moving average over here that's 13 moving average over here converged with the uh, 13 weeks moving average and also now if we take a closer look we can see that we are still below the 50 percent in the uh, lower half of that particular bearish candle and you see we are losing steam here what's taking place we can see a pattern formation and that particular pattern uh, here at the uh, channel support uh, that's a tweezer bottom where we see the tails the shadows are short or not that long so um we need to operate and take a closer look to that because that particular support region is uh, exactly the same thing you see that uh, that past resistance over here you see that pivot point now is that uh, 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 support region over here and also that's our uh, channel uptrend uh, channel support so uh, maybe we're gonna bounce from here and going back higher but we need confirmation and for the moment it's looking very 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 bearish so uh maybe 
if you saw, if you see this, that's your 52 weeks moving average, 104 and 208, and maybe we can come down towards 1260 to retest those levels. That's um, a key level. If we lose the 1260, we're going to go down towards 1240. But for the moment, you see, uh, 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 taking in consideration the pattern forming formation here at the channel support, maybe uh, we're going to see... Uh, that's a higher prob probability of see a sideways movement. Okay, so uh, be cautious here. Now let's move on and let's have a look at silver. And now silver over here. And what do we have with silver? Silver exactly uh, the same thing, but with silver is different. Now here uptrending also, but you see following that particular bullish uh, bullish uh, candle a reversal inside week for one two weeks, and now we are uh, going lower. You see all the major moving averages are all in here. All moving averages are, are acting as a resistance and pushing prices silver prices down. You see also a type of pattern formation but this one is a little bit uh, particular if we take a look at that uh, uh, over here if you take a look at that pivot point over here you see low another lower low another lower low and now a lower high what we can see we can see a formation and that's a head and shoulder formation boom you see so that's a key level over here at that key level that uh, 1750 and above 1750 we can go higher but here now what we are witnessing we're witnessing a another type of pattern so we have an a b c and a d so we can go lower and retest that particular level over here so that's very very um uh, critical zone over here that's a major level and so let's see what's gonna happen for now we are uh, bearish and my guess is that we're gonna remain uh, bearish for at least uh, this particular week and if we uh, now here oops excuse me like that here you see uh, the trend line over here from that particular high, that's a high, lower high, lower high, another lower high, lower high. Here, that's also a lower high, that particular trend line over here, we're trying to break above, boom, we tested it as support, and now we are still uh, on that particular uh, uh, trend line. And also that's a type of uh, uh, downtrend uh, channel, you see. If I do just that, okay. You see, boom, that's a, a channel also. That's our resistance, support, resistance. We remain here close to resistance, but if we go lower, I don't think so because over here I already show you the uh, head and shoulders, reverse head and shoulders pattern. So that's, a, uh, that's very bullish. And now for that particular moment, we see that another trend line over here. I'm going to do that that way so you can see the greater picture. You see, here we are also uh, going, uh, we are bullish, you see, over here, because that's, boom, like that, boom, and we are going like that. And also, you see, uh, so that's a great, great, great uh, pattern. You see also a head and shoulders, reversal head and shoulders. So you see over here, that's a critical point. So above that point, we can go higher. First of all, you need to be above that particular region uh 17 close to the 18 and also 18 50 18 60 above that particular region to go towards the 22 so i remain uh bullish on uh on here on um, silver and if we go even much uh further you can see from those highs over here that's a huge, 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 huge accumulation phase that's taking place here. So I need to remind you to have a look sometimes at the greater picture. Okay, and if I take a look at the greater picture here, 
and that's a great cup and handle pattern you see if i be uh, be uh, see here supports accumulation phase over here and then we need a break above that particular level and going higher so in the longer run longer term silver is uh, uh i'm bullish on silver because you see from the lows over here we are going back higher you see and also that's a head and shoulders pattern and that's it that's a very very critical zone and critical point for silver I remember over here what do we have we have a gap and that gap over here must be filled okay so that's it okay so that's it for today thanks for um, having me and thanks for joining me and thanks for watching so remember me uh, I'm gonna see you again on Wednesday for the uh, crypto report and then see you next Monday for the uh, pre market and the week ahead uh perspective and analysis for the whole week okay so have a great trading week take profits and manage your risk properly and i see you next time thank you bye bye